Hey everyone and welcome to Think Copilot. My name is Gary Trinder. I'm a developer advocate at Microsoft focusing on Microsoft 365 and I have with me today Waldek. Hey folks, good day. My name is Valet Astigas and I am developer advocate for Microsoft 365 and Microsoft. And we have a guest with us today, uh, Vardaman. Do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, hi everyone. Uh, so my name is Vardaman Deshpande. Uh, I'm a I'm a product architect. I've been in this uh, space since a really long time. Uh, worked on Microsoft 365, Azure, and yeah, more recently all the AI AI stuff coming out of Microsoft. So yeah, looking forward to this chat. Yeah. Fantastic. Thanks for joining us today. So uh, let's get into it. So uh, really, we're interested in, you know, how do you use AI, Microsoft Copilots in your day to day work? Yeah, so uh, like the, the the bread and butter, the main main copilot I use as is any like application builder is the GitHub copilot. And that has been like, I, I, I've been using it since I think, pre beta stage when like we, we had the, the access to it. And it is kind of improved so much of the time it takes uh, to build something. So all the boilerplate stuff, things like you know, uh, copy this, uh, copy this string into this, copy like uh, there's a lot of like uh, boilerplate stuff which we had to do before. Uh, but you can just uh, have a copilot do it for you. And uh, one other thing which I found really useful is that it learns as you start develop, it learns your style of development. So imagine you are creating a few files, it knows how uh, how the files are formatted, it knows how the how, how you like naming your variables and so on. And then the next time you uh, try, try to tell it and say, do the same thing again, then it, it will do it exactly the way you, you have done it before. So it's not just like a, a, a request to open AI or, or, or whatever, and then comes back, but it's learning uh, how you develop and it gives a lot of uh, uh, benefits and improves a lot of time uh, going forward. So, so that's that, the, right? the main right. thing. So based on the way you use it, like how does that change the way you work and the way you think? So uh, I think it uh, it saves a lot of time for sure. Uh, and when it, when you say change the way I work, uh, the one other benefit which I've seen is, uh, is this code readable enough? Uh, so if, if I write something and I, if I select the text and if I ask Copilot, okay, explain this to me. If Copilot is able to explain it properly, uh, uh, then I, I kind of think that, okay, Copilot understands it. It's able to uh, reply back to me with the correct logic of the code. So it must be good enough. I don't need to make it more simpler or I don't need to make it more complex. So it's just like, it, it's really like having a second pair of eyes uh, next to you while, while, we, while we are coding. And I, and I think, yeah, it has reduced a lot of dependency of uh, like, you know, going on the web, trying to find how to do certain like simple things which you know how to do, but you still went to Google to uh, look for look for them. So all of that is right in the copilot co now. So uh, uh, it, it, it saves a lot of time and it helps you uh, kind of be sure of your code as well in terms and of uh, and, understanding and I get the benefit you also get right is that like when you would use internet search you will find some code and then you yeah. still need to, to take that step to do do the work to adapt it yeah. to your code whereas here yes you're yes. asking for something and it's already embedded into your code right correct and and this this ties in with the previous thing i mentioned is that it knows about like your coding style it knows about your file structure uh, applications and so on. So uh, yeah, exactly. That step of modifying the internet code to fit into your your code uh, that that also is, is many times is taken care of for sure. Um, that's uh, and and also uh, I, I think one big thing which I personally Copa GitHub Copilot with, has helped me is like writing the boilerplate of unit tests. Uh, like we all know that uh, like. It, unit tests can be super repetitive. So you have to copy the same uh, code everywhere, uh, just change two, two, three things. And uh, then it's basically 99% the same code, maybe like two lines <laughs> are different for new unit tests. So uh, yeah, that, uh, that uh, 
doing things again and again has has uh, improved a lot because you just tell copilot okay based on this file uh, create a new file or based on this unit test create a new unit test and so on it will it will do uh, that uh, that job for you so yeah it has helped helped quite a lot in that that aspect yeah the unit test one it, that's where i feel like it's almost magic where yes. you've already got yes. uh, you know you've got a file there you got a test suite you're just adding a new test in there, but you you have to describe the test, right? You have to write yes. the, the, yes. the test name. And in that name, it can work out, you know, if you write, obviously, good test names, then the code can just appear. And it's just yeah. like, oh, okay. <laughs> now <laughs> now that's good. I, I like that because it's it's like, it's not like line by line or anything. It's gone through the whole Get thing, uh, even like down to the asserts. And then, you know, like you say, 90% of it might be done, but it, it's that, that speeding up and obviously yeah. testing is 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 one of those things that we you know, we know that we should do sometimes we don't always have time to do it either we've got lots of pressures um you know we we always want to ship uh, but sometimes yeah. you know some so, some things can be uh missed off but with using github copilot it's, it's it just makes it easier to say well yeah of course i can add that i yeah. can add it in yeah. so quick um you're interested you mentioned how you'd been using github copilot for quite a while and actually you know from the, the early versions of it um yeah how how have you seen it advance like what couldn't you do at the beginning that you potentially could do now and how's that helped i think one of the things which wasn't there super early was the uh, git uh, the copilot chat in github uh, or maybe like i i hadn't used it right from the start uh, I just use the like in VS Code Copilot. Uh, there's one now in uh, Visual Studio as well. If uh, if if people aren't familiar, and I use that as well. Uh, so to kind of generate uh, uh, generate code and and help me. Uh, but yeah, uh, as uh, as time went on, I think uh, like not sure. I might be biased, but the suggestions keep getting better and better uh, but, but maybe that's just me uh, but but yeah it's just, it's one of those technologies which uh, kind of disappears into the way you work because like if if i don't have it installed and i just sit there expecting it to generate uh, <laughs> and, and if it's not there then it's it's always feels like a gap you know and where was this uh, like you know 2 years ago uh, so it's just so so it's basically disappeared into my my workflow of uh, writing code, and so that's I think is just all I can say of like how 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 it has improved and uh, the benefits uh, coming across. Oh, which is uh, great, right? Because like it's so uh, immersive or unobtrusive that it's like yeah, it yeah, blends yeah. with your work. It's just there whenever you need it, but it's not in your face. It's not like every single time pop up. It's like no 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 exactly. I like just let me code right and then whenever you need it it's there. Um, think about exactly. that like go, going back back in time. Do you recall your first moment you saw it in action? And you were like, wow, this is gonna change everything. Like basically the light bulb go go off. Yeah yeah I think I think it, there's a few moments like this when uh, you're just writing typing something and you move on to the next line and it has correctly figured out what you are going to try next or write next and it has done the job for you I think there was like few moments like like this where it knows like what you're trying to do and then it has done it for you you itself like that's one thing and also like maybe you have to uh, do some like elaborate switch case of i don't know 20 different things and then you're you're thinking okay i might have just do copy paste copy paste copy paste but then copilot generates those 20 cases for you and uh, it uh, it uh, it's just like yeah that's that's magical so uh, those two two things i remember kind of convinced me that okay at least uh, GitHub Copilot uh, is here to stay, <laughs> and uh, that uh, that that is uh, basically a a good uh, good tool for for us to have. Fantastic! Uh, yeah, I absolutely love GitHub Copilot. It's one of those things that if it wasn't there, you'd be like, oh, there's something missing, right? There's a there's a yeah. hole there in uh, in the way that I'm working. And exactly. Exactly. Back to that that way of like you don't really have to remember that it's there because it's just 
it's there it's part of your id right it's, it's exactly just bumping you enhancing what you're what you're already doing yeah and um, that's like one of the good things about uh, like uh, technology that just disappears as i said like you you're not aware you're using that you don't have to make that mental jump from okay let, I've, i'm doing this now i have to change my context and do this so technology that kind of just disappears is 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 best according to me into your workflow yeah definitely yeah. um so we've talked about github copilot obviously a lot of um kind of uses of uh, generative ai uh, writing code um is there any kind of uh examples of, of using uh, generative ai outside of code do you do you use it uh, at all yeah so i've i've been dabbling a little bit in like the microsoft 365 copilot as well uh, I've been, uh, MVPs were thankfully given access uh, uh, to it. And uh, uh, we, I, I tried it a lot of different things, trying to ask questions about documents, uh, ask questions about people. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, uh, it, it, it's not something which I use as much as I use the other, other GitHub, uh, sorry, other co-pilots. Uh, but yeah, happy, uh, it's, it's just like, the good thing I see is uh, about the uh, whole uh, it being local to your tenant. Uh, so you don't have to go outside your, maybe you have data residency requirements, compliance requirements, and all of that is taken care of. And you get this generative uh, AI package for your compliance needs. And you can just ask it questions and, and, and so on. So I think that definitely has a, has a place uh, in the workflow and, uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I use it any uh, any time uh, I can. Um, imagine, yeah. imagine, right? And I think that that's a stretch. I know that, but imagine, imagine that you come across somebody who has never tried LLM ever. Right. Yet. What would be the first thing you recommend to them to try to have to have them experience kind of the same light bulb experience? It depends on what what they're trying to do, right? Or because I, I I was speaking to some of my friends who who are not into IT, who have just heard about uh, this, like okay, there's this company called OpenAI who has done something, and so I explained to them a little bit on the background. And when I said that, okay, say you want to generate a new contract, but you want to generate a new contract based on your previous contract with a supplier or something, and then based on the previous contact contract but then this new information from this email so you use the previous contracts template you use this information from email and then generate a completely new contract and that at that point they were just like okay there is no way you can do this and uh, if that is possible then yeah. <laughs> exactly and if this can be done then it it, it has arrived for them basically so uh some examples like this you know because people spend weeks or months uh creating contracts for example or just creating documents which mostly resemble documents which they already have it's just updating those documents let's say it's a contract or an invoice or a i don't know there can be many other things but if all of this can be automated and simplified with just like you know stay copilot just if this is the first of the month, Copilot just brings the invoice invoice in front of you and says, "Hey, this is the invoice which you need to send. Can I send it?" And then when you press send, it's already already there. Mm. Uh, so yeah, you know things like that. I believe automating a lot of manual things of running a business is 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 I think where uh, there's a chance to just dazzle someone who hasn't used a LLM or, or any kind of uh, LLM before. Uh, so that's. Uh, Cool. Um, so you, uh, so you yeah, mentioned there about, you know, you maybe you're new to LLM. Um, obviously we talk about prompting quite a bit, um, mm -hmm. with LLMs and kind of building that skill of, you know, how do I actually ask this thing something right and get a good enough response? Yeah. Is there anything that you use, um, maybe more than, than what you use with others of like a standard kind of like, Hey, I've got this, this prompt that is generally useful uh, for me. Um, have you got any examples of that? Uh, like use, to be honest, uh, I think, uh, the only like, uh, specific prompt, which I, which I uh, use sometimes is 
try to keep the the language simple instead of like having a lot of like uh, uh, you know jargon in the answer all my kind of prompts end with like uh, you know explain this in simple terms to someone who is not familiar with the with uh, with the industry or or so on so uh, i think and also like uh, we can talk about it later but i'm i'm building a uh, like a, a a teams app which is a saas uh, copilot as well and one of the things i realized during the testing with the teams uh, store is uh, uh, they try to uh, in, uh, while testing they try to uh, ask the llm a lot of like uh, content stay safety stuff and at that point i remember uh, i realized that there's a lot of good content safety already available as part of the azure open ai service so i did not have to put on any additional prompts which say that don't be rude or uh, you know always be polite or things like that a lot of there is already a lot of that is already available as part of the azure open ai service uh, so regarding prompts i like personally i don't have any like you know uh, specific like uh, hack prompt hacks or anything because it just works for me so i don't have to uh, you know have a list of a cheat, a cheat sheet or like a five bullet points to try to get it to work uh, according to what i what i want it just uh, uh, works for me basically yeah, i guess it's it's kind of like just getting into the mindset right of working with lms thinking you know yeah. how do i construct something that is useful that's going to give it enough direction enough context so that when the responses come um they are more accurate right the, yeah. they're not yeah. just you know completely random where you're looking and go that's okay i've spent my time putting you know a prompt in but what i've got back out really isn't that great uh, <laughs> you know you want yeah. you know you want you want to make sure that you, the responses are accurate so then you yeah. you feel like you're moving forward and um, so i mean to actually talk about the uh the the, the product that you're uh, that you're working on um how yeah. do you know um, from the user base what what are people finding useful what types of things you know are they are they using yeah. and getting value uh from yeah, you know, from your tool, your assistant uh, that uses AI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a uh, yeah, it's a so it's a Teams app called Focusworks AI, and it's already available as part of the Team Store, and it's got a, a, a lot of like traction as well. I see a lot of people accessing it, and the main thing people are using is is to uh, create uh, emails. Uh, basically, so they they want to give one or two sentences, and uh, they want to write like a five sentence, six sentence email. And uh, that's that's I've seen the, is is the primary use case uh, people people want. They apparently people don't like uh, writing emails, and uh, <laughs> they they want AI to help uh, help with them, uh, help with it. Uh, that and just like you know grammar checks, uh, uh, how to, uh, like uh, if if you write a sentence and then ask the LLM to say okay explain the sentence back to me just just to convey uh, their idea like ha does this sentence really convey what i'm trying to say so things like that you know like we know that not a not a uh, if for people who uh, don't have english as like their first language sometimes there can be uh, sometimes there can be some sentences which mean something else so you can ask copilot or any any llm basically to uh, explain the sentence back to you uh, to know what it means uh, so that that's there and uh, uh, yeah as I, as I said just like formatting text summarizing text uh, and, and so on uh, so yeah I'm uh, 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 just recently uh, switched to like GPT-4 as well in in the app so and I, I'm finding it GPT-4 turbo to be a lot better than the previous uh, 3.5 which I was using 16k uh, so as the models evolve uh, the LLMs get better and better and the value which like any the co-pilots or any AI app give just automatically improves because the LLM has improved. Uh, so that's another thing which, you know, uh, is, is really helpful and really cool about this whole uh, uh, LLM business. Yeah, I think, so, I think, I think you mentioned in there a great point about the ability, you know, to clearly explain, explain what, what you mean. And I cannot help but think about, I don't know if you know, there's this meme about this, these two guys and one guy tried to explain to the other what kind of dog he has. 
Mm. And it's a big, wide dog, and it's like it has short hair, long hair, and all of that. And then eventually, like one one of them arrives at a picture in his in 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 his mind of this dog that is nothing like the actual dog. And I guess like yeah, yeah. the same thing with LLMs. And and I guess it only proves right, like how when something is crystal clear in our minds, how hard it is to actually to explain that to, to some, 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 someone else. And like oftentimes, you know, like we will get into arguments because we're not talking about the same thing really. And I guess LLM is a perfect test for that because like yeah, when you yeah. explain something in a prompt and you get something else back, like you can think like, well, that AI thing doesn't work, but wait a minute, like have you actually conveyed in writing what you actually mean? And only yep. then you start yep. going, oh, yeah, that is ambiguous. That isn't clear. I need to tweak that. And only then you kind of, okay, now I have clear understanding. What is it exactly that I want to ask? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And it's on the same lines, like uh, I just remembered that there was this scenario where like I wanted to convince uh, someone about a certain situation. And, uh, okay, I, I said to the uh to the to, to the llm that okay this is the situation and these are the five points which i'm i'm trying to make so what else can i add there and then it suggested me uh, two other things which can be uh which you because you're thinking in one one direction right so yeah. you want someone to uh proofread stuff for you uh so that's always always, always great yeah the idea generation side of it of just like you yeah. have an idea you don't want to get like blinkered into just your Correct. perspective Correct. getting Correct. other people's perspectives which may be like you know you're writing a document so what do you do you send that document to yeah. someone and we'll get feedback right it's yeah. a similar yeah. thing but having that kind of instant response um based on you know what you are trying to achieve and and the outcomes that that you want to achieve as as well um yeah it's Really interesting approach. There was one thing that, that you mentioned that you said that you upgraded to GPT-4 and you said yeah. it's just better. What 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 does better mean? Like yeah. what differences did you see in, in your application? Because, you know, people using maybe Microsoft Copilots, they see the little switch and it's like, well, mm. why should I use GPT-4, right? I, what's wrong with this one? So, you know, what, what kind of differences yeah. does it make? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. And I, I asked this question my, uh, to myself as well before switching to GPT-4. And while, while I was testing it, uh, I think the, so uh, developers uh, would know, like there's this something called system prompt uh, when you are, we are when you're talking to an LLM, which means basically you give it an, some set of instructions at the start, and then it follows those instructions when when communicating with you. So things like you could tell it your name, you could tell it how to behave, uh, and then you could also uh, give some more details about yourself. Like, you know, I'm a high school teacher. I need to uh, explain something to my students. So always use simple concepts. Uh, don't use a really complex language and so on. So if you do that and then you start ch chatting with, uh, with the LLM, uh, for GPT-4, you will realize that it is much better at like listening to that system prompt and uh, adhering to it, basically. So any any additional context you can give to uh, to your conversation with the with the bot uh, is is adhered to uh, in case of GPT-4. Also, like uh, fu with function calling, you can call out to external services uh, with uh, with an LLM, uh, like for example. Um, setting reminders uh, you can say that uh, whenever in the conversation the user wants to set a reminder then go call this external service uh, set the reminder and uh, come come back to the llm for that so function calling also is a lot better in gpt4 so by the history in the context or the history in the chat it's able to understand a lot better and make those decisions of calling the function or calling the external service uh, so those those two things like looking at the system prompt uh then calling function calling and and just like uh, uh better at like conversation i would say uh things like answering answering like uh questions uh, to the point being precise sometimes the answers do get a bit long so you have to add instructions in the system prompt to keep the answers concise and short but uh, so that 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 bit I think is is a lot better uh, 
uh, compared to the previous uh, LLMs. So if if you're if you if you're starting something right now, do have a look at like GPT four Turbo uh, definitely in your app. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, uh, Varman, thank you very much for coming to talk to us today. It's been great to uh, chit chat about how you're using your know, GitHub Copilot in the main, but you know how your product is is going getting on as well. Um, so it's yeah. been great to hear if, if you on that. Uh, and with that, I'd like to thank everyone for for listening and for watching. And we will say bye bye. Thank you, folks. Right. Bye. Thank, thank you. Bye.